So literally right after I uh, recorded my video on Schrodinger's cat for this playlist, I heard about this paper right here. And so I actually heard about it from this video right here, so uh, by Sabina Hoff Hassenfelder right here. And so uh, I will link to this video here so you can see what she says about this story. Uh, but what it is, is they essentially try to get a superposition state in something that is more macroscopic. And so it's 16 micrograms, which seems, you know, pretty small, but it's on the order of 10 to the power of 17 atoms in it. And so they were able to, well, with some caveats, I think, they were able to get what they call a Schrodinger cat state, which is uh, a macroscopic object in a superposition of two states. Uh, and so I'm going to, I'm not going to discuss all this paper because it's actually extremely technical, but uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit of it here. And so what they did, so well, I'll read some of these things I have highlighted. So according to the Schrodinger equation, a physical system can be in any linear combination of possible states. While the validity of this principle is routinely validated for microscopic systems, it is still unclear why we do not observe macroscopic objects to be in superpositions of states that can be distinguished by some classical property. Here we demonstrate the preparation of a mechanical resonator with an effective mass of 16 0.2 micrograms in Schrodinger cat states of motion, where the constituent atoms are in a superposition of oscillating with two opposite phases. Uh, so to kind of uh, preamble uh, this, because I'm going to read a few other sections. So what they're doing is they're coupling a qubit, which is you know, a, a quantum bit like we like uh, what you would see in quantum computers to something that is essentially like a sound wave. So they call them phonons and they're essentially what you could call particles uh, of, of, of sound waves. They're called pseudo particles. But uh, so but but essentially what that means is they're looking at the vibration of this 16.2 microgram crystal uh, that is coupled to the uh, to the qubit and so they can actually sort of try and find the uh, the state of the qubit coupled with this resonator with this crystal that will vibrate uh, at, at a frequency that is related to the wave function of the qubit. Uh, so let's kind of go on here. So I'm just going to read some of these things I have highlighted. So many explanations have been proposed as to why we may never encounter a cat in such an unfortunate situation. So talking about the uh, being in both alive and dead states. So macroscopic objects may simply be too complex and subject to too many sources of decoherence to sustain a superposition of classically distinct states. Other theories introduce additional effects beyond standard quantum mechanics, such as wave function collapse due to intrinsic stochastic noise or gravitational decoherence. In keeping with the spirit of Schrodinger's cat, these effects are typically expected to scale with the mass of the system and the distinctness of the states that are superposed. Therefore, observing state superpositions in massive objects is of key importance for exploring the validity range of quantum mechanics as we know it. Uh, and then it lists a few sort of practical things that could be uh, that could be shown with that. There have been many experimental demonstrations of Schrodinger cat states, which we will call cat states from here on. These include superpositions of internal and emotional degrees of freedom in trapped ions, phase space superpositions of electromagnetic waves in both the optical and microwave domains, Greenberger Horn Zeilinger states, current superpositions in squids, where squids is uh, something that has to do with quantum computers, and it's using these uh, these Josephson junctions, but I won't get into that, uh, and spatial superpositions of large molecules. So our mechanical resonator is a high overtone bulk acoustic wave resonator, uh, which 
they're just describing this sort of crystal that they're using, which we couple to a superconducting transmon qubit. The latter allows us to create control and read the phonon states of the uh, the high overtone bulk acoustic wave resonator. And so the phonon, like I said, is uh, a pseudo particle of essentially a sound wave, so a vibration in the in the uh, crystal here. So in a classical picture, one can imagine a coherent state, uh, so this alpha here as a ket vector, in the phonon mode as a coherent displacement of the atomic lattice with an amplitude proportional to alpha. And so they're saying that the the phonon is just going to be a vibration in this crystal. So in the quantum picture, and I'm going to skip over this for the moment. An example of a cat state is a quantum superposition of two coherent states with opposite displacement amplitudes leading to the physical interpretation of such a state as the superposition of two oscillations of the atomic lattice with the same frequency omega sub p and relative phase pi. And so they're saying that it will have the same frequency but they will be 180 degrees out of phase from each other. So uh, you know when one is at the sort of crest of its uh, wave, the other one will be at the trough of its wave. So considering a snapshot in time where both oscillations are at their displacement maximum, so what I just said, Schrodinger's cat being in a superposition of dead and alive is analogous to a superposition of atoms in the h-bar being in two distinct positions in space, as illustrated in the inset of figure 1a. So note that here we define this positions as distinct when their separation is larger than the fluctuations due to quantum, thermal, or other sources of noise. Uh, and they're saying that so this isn't just because of noise. And so this is the figure they were referring to where uh, here, so we'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, so this is their their crystal here that uh, this darker blue is showing it in one oscillation mode and then this sort of redder color here is in another oscillation mode. Uh, so we'll zoom back out here. And so this is what they're sort of looking at here. So this is uh, the phase space in imaginary space. So the horizontal axis is the real space uh, and then the uh, up and down the the vertical is the imaginary and so they're looking at this alpha here which is uh, sort of in the same phase here in red uh, but then they sort of change it so that uh, the vibrations go either uh, around this up here uh, sort of going up uh, clockwise here or down counterclockwise here and so they're looking at the vibrations of this crystal going in these different phase directions here. All right, and so we can go down here. So a more intuitive explanation for the origin of the cat state comes from the time evolution of the reduced phonon state in phase space. And so that's what I was looking up there at uh, figure 1c. So as illustrated in figure 1c and shown in the supplementary materials, uh, if the qubit is initialized in this state here, so they're saying this qubit is initialized in this uh, superposition of this E, which is the excited state, and this G, which is the ground state. And in the limit of large amplitude, the evolution leads to a rotation in phase space with uh, this angular velocity and a distortion uh, of the coherent states. We call the resulting states, so these states right here with the phi is the uh, the phonon or the vibration of the crystal whose full expressions are given in the supplementary material. So initializing the qubit state uh, in the plus and minus z direction. Uh, so we have here, this is our superposition. The phonon state will evolve according to this superposition. So, uh, so we have the plus uh, imaginary and minus imaginary uh, sort of phase. So going either clockwise or counterclockwise around the phase there. So at time uh, TR divided by two, the two state components have covered a rotation angle of 90 degrees around a circle of radius alpha, maximizing their separation in phase space and forming a cat state. Uh, finally, at the revival time, the two phonon states uh, 
state components have both rotated by a phase of pi or 180 degrees and approximately recombine in phase space. And so they're just describing this where they start in this, uh, they go up here to this, uh, this phi sub plus and this phi sub minus, and then they kind of come back here and recombine uh, right there. So that's what they were describing in there. Uh, and if we go down here, so we can now translate the parameters of the measured cat state into physical properties of the phonon mode, such as the spatial separation between atoms. A state size of D equals 1.61 corresponds to a maximum delocalization of 7.0, uh, where this uh, X sub ZPF is the zero point motion of an equivalent 1D quantum harmonic oscillator. So they're saying that it has a, uh, it's sort of delocalizing around this zero point like a harmonic oscillator, like a pendulum swinging back and forth uh, where this uh, XZPF is sort of where the pendulum is pointing straight down. So since we are not considering a center of mass mode, there is some freedom of choosing this is then associated with an effective oscillating mass of the mode. If we choose the root mean square value of the atomic displacements, we find an effective mass of this. So they're saying that this is essentially like their uh, mass of the pendulum, you could uh, say. So that corresponds to 10 to the power of 17 atoms delocalized over a distance uh, of uh, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 18 meters. And so that, that's what they're saying is that you have these two modes, these two sort of opposite phases of this vibration of the uh, crystal, uh, which is coupled to this, to this uh, qubit. But here is kind of where my caveat that I mentioned at the beginning comes in. So the way they're measuring this is using something called uh, quantum state tomography. And so what this is, so we can think about it, uh, if we want to think about it in terms of, say, spin. So say we have a sort of Stern-Gerlach uh, apparatus here, which are two magnets. So we have the north and the south. And so we have our beam of electrons coming through here, and it can either go spin up or spin down. And so we're preparing it either in the spin up or spin down. And then we have some other, uh, some other stern girl edge apparatus here, which is sort of going in and out of the screen. And so this will, uh, and it will be at some angle relative to this one. So uh, it'll have some angle that we can call theta relative to that one. And so then we will measure whether it sort of goes uh, in one direction or the other. And so what quantum tomography is, is essentially doing this a bunch of times. So we have this with some angle. It's prepared in this state. Uh, I mean, it's a little more complicated than this. This is just an illustration. This isn't exactly what they're doing, but uh, the essence of it is that they're preparing it in this state, uh, and then they are sort of uh, getting images of it uh, after uh, sort of sending it through this other state here. Uh, but they're getting images of it sort of measured at different times along the beam. And so you, you could measure it at sort of that point or at that point or at that point along the beam. And then they are sort of getting the different states that they measure it in there. And so what they're doing is they're trying to find essentially the the state psi uh, times the psi uh, star here, which is the complex conjugate. And so what they're finding is this, because that is sort of what you measure in real space. And then from this, what they want to do is sort of decompose it so that they can find the psi and the psi star here so that they can find the phase of it because when you do this you are essentially canceling out the phase because this will be you know some state here so we'll call that lowercase phi times uh, you know some some phase factor here theta and this one too will be sort of the bra vector here uh, times some 
uh, times some e to the i theta here. And so it will have some phase factor uh, that they want to essentially try to find by by getting this and then decomposing it into the uh, the uh, psi and psi star here from the sort of multiplication of the two. And then they can find these phase factors here so they can get the sort of real and complex phase. And so uh, they're, I don't know, this, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. Uh, it's an interesting experiment or, or method, I guess. But I don't know. It, to me, it seems like it has a lot of uh, a lot of issues, and you can read about some of those issues. I'll link to this paper in the description down below as well, uh, if you want to read more about this quantum state tomography. But uh, you know, so they're they're essentially measuring the you know the vibration of this crystal, and so they will get you know a, a vibrational mode that is, you know, a single mode from one experiment, and then it'll be a different mode in the, in sort of the, the next trial. And then they are, you know, getting these different modes and then trying to find these, uh, trying to find these phase factors here from the different modes, from the different, I guess, phases of the, uh, the crystal vibrations. Uh, but anyway, I mean, it's, it's still an interesting experiment. Uh, I'm, you know, my misgivings might be misplaced because, you know, I'm not uh, a physicist. So, you know, I'm, I'm a chemist. And so, you know, maybe I just don't understand this experiment well enough to, uh, to make that call. But anyway, that was sort of my caveat. Uh, so, you know, think, you know, take it as you will. Uh, but anyway, if you want to read this paper, uh, it will also be linked to in the description down below. So I have this here that uh, that has several of these, these uh, links here. So this first one up here is the paper I was looking at. This is that uh, selected concepts in quantum state tomography. Uh, but there's also this one that is about uh, quantum state tomography. Uh, these these links here are all sort of about uh, sort of how they actually couple this qubit with the resonator here. And so if you're interested in how they actually couple a qubit with a resonator, then you can check out some of these links. But anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting, and I will see you in the next one.